Welcome to Space Engineers. This is Enigma. In the, today's video, we're going to go over the Survive and Thrive Assembly Reclamation Tools Emergency Recovery Kit and how we set that up. I uh, just updated it for the post release version of the uh, going out of early access uh, version 1.189 of Space Engineers, uh, February 28th, 2019. It is cold outside and um, you may or may not be able to tell, but I got my heater going on in the background here. Please go ahead and ignore it. Hopefully we can get through this and I'll show you how we can quickly make this happen. To get started, all you need to do is uh, go ahead and uh, go to the Steam Workshop and look for the Start Emergency Recovery Kit. Just subscribe to it and it should show up in your Space Engineers game. Now in the workshop page there is a link uh, to instructions uh, which I've got on another screen for me so I'll go through those. Uh, there's also going to be a download to um, a start uh, scenario that will be on the moon or to the scenario that I'm going to go to show you how I make right now. So let's go ahead and get that uh, started. So if we go back to Space Engineers um, after you subscribe um, all you need to do is just go to new game or load game if you want to go ahead and, and just plop down the kit uh, in your existing game. Uh, but what I like to do is I like to go to new game, go to custom game, and I'm going to go down to star system and enter creative mode. I want to create, I'll call this, uh, let's just call this new start for now. And offline mode, uh, for sure you can do this with, uh, with friends or by yourself, that's fine. Um, it uh, doesn't require any mods. I don't like to have auto saves on. That's just the personal preference. I like to manually do my saves. And I'll go into advanced here on the on the game creation mode and uh, set my sizes to realistic, uh, everything else to realistic. Mainly, you want to have realistic for the grinding speed for sure, um, just because you don't want to take any chances actually grinding stuff off. That's uh, such as like the battery, if you put any extra battery parts on. If you grind your battery, once your battery is built, you lose um, you lose your power cells and you could essentially die. So, um, realistic settings, at least for grinding speed, is you know, kind of what I recommend, at least to get started. You can always change it later. Um, it's up to you. Environmental hostility, keep it safe because I don't want any asteroids raining down on my head right now, uh, especially when I'm making a tutorial. Um, everything else appears to be fine at this level. If I go down to, um, I don't need the respawn ship. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I don't need the respawn ship. I don't need. Um, I want. I do want to enable spectator. We're going to also. I like to uh, enable in-game scripts, just because there's some scripts I like to use. Uh, but that's not going to be part of this tutorial. Cargo ships. I don't need cargo ships right now. I mean, you can leave those in the game yourself. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to also spread on here. We don't need tools. We definitely do not need tools with this kit. We don't need uh, spiders enabled or any kind of wolves enabled uh, or drones um, because we don't need to scavenge parts. And this kit is minimalistic as as a, as you can possibly get. But it's so minimalistic that it doesn't leave you also um, you know, high and dry. I mean, you do have the ability to, to lift yourself up from the bootstraps, quite literally. Um, we're going to enable friendly missile damage. It's fine. Now, this is important. Um, if anything, the only setting you really need to just disable for sure is this enable progression. Otherwise, the kit is rather useless. You won't be able to build uh, the parts that are needed as part, as, as part of the kit's progression. So we're going to disable uh, progression and just hit OK at this point. Oh, let's see, I also want to disable respawn ships. I don't want to respawn ships. I like to have kind of a sudden death mode to my early games here. And um, we can just leave the auto respawn on. That's just fine. And just hit OK. Um, I do want to enter this game in creative mode because I need to really kind of pick where I want to start. So with that all set, we're just going to click on start. And here we go. Now when I get in the game, I will spawn into my body uh, near the Earth-like planet. But I don't want to start on the Earth-like planet. The hardest start in the game, and for me, uh, when testing this kit, uh, is not on the Earth or on any planet, but really, it's on the Moon. Now to get onto the Moon, um, I mean, I could fly all the way up there, but you know, it would just take too long with my character. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and use um, spectator mode. Uh, to go ahead and do this. 
To get the spectator mode, all you have to do is just hit F8 on your keyboard, and that will put you into a uh, point in space here. Being in the obser observation mode out here, a spectator mode, um, I can fly around using the W, A, S, D, D keys, but it's, it's very, very slow as you can tell. I'm not really going anywhere. Um, to increase my speed, I'm just going to hold down the shift key and then use the scroll wheel up. So shift, scroll wheel up, and that will actually increase my my speed, as you can tell. I can slow it down by scroll wheel down, holding down shift. Yep, and here we go. This is the moon here. So this is the Earth-like planet, and over here is the moon. Now, just kind of see what all is around on the moon. You can tell that there are um, poles of ice um, on both the north and the south poles. I like to pick a spot just smack in the middle here uh, for for these kinds of playthroughs on the moon. Now shift scroll wheel down and kind of slow down a bit. And uh, we'll just pick a spot. Oh, let's see here. Where can we pick a spot? And this looks like a nice, nice starting spot, right? Right about here. We'll just put it right here for now. Perfect. This this will work. Um, got a nice view of the Earth over there. I wonder if I could maybe go hop across, find something just a little bit more scenic here, just to get started. And you'll do this as you just kind of pick where you want to where you want to be. This, I mean, this looks like a good good place right here, actually. Yeah. This is a nice spot. Nice good starting spot. We'll just do it right here. Now to go ahead and spawn your character here, all you have to do is do control space. Control space will pop your character nearby and there I am. Um, just floating in space right there. Now to switch back to my character, I just hit F6 and that puts me in my body. Hit V to look out and around and you can tell here I am. So I'm just going to hit V again, get back in my suit and I'm going to hit the C key to kind of land myself here and then X to turn off my jetpack and I have landed. Here I am on the moon at a good spot to go ahead and uh, get started here. Um, being in, as I said in creative, all you need to do is keep things simple. Just hit the F10 key and F10 will pull up uh, your blueprint menu which you can, um, if, you're, if you subscribe to the starter kit you'll find the starter kit in your blueprint menu. Just scroll down to it. It's the start emergency recovery kit right here. Uh, with this uh, icon and just double click on it. I'm going to hit V to get back in my suit and I'm just going to go and just drop the kit right right about where it was and there we go. So uh, this is uh, a new start here on the moon and I'm going to go ahead and save this just right where it is right now. Um, there's nothing further I need to do other than to maybe clear out my toolbar here. Um, to do that I'm going to go to G and I just like to right click all the things and just literally start with absolutely nothing. Um, do control one, control two to flop between toolbars here um, and just hit escape. And so now my character is set, ready to go. Being in creative mode, I'm not using any resource resources. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this right here. Let's see here. Right about we'll just do it the save right here. Save and we're going to exit and we're gonna save changes before quitting. That's fine. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Now I can go in and load the game. There's the uh, new start that I created. And before I publish it, just unstart the game. There's one more. Th there's a couple more things I need to do. I need to edit the settings. Obviously, I need to flip this to survival mode, so I'm no longer uh, cheating on my uh, personal suit resources there. And then I want to go to advance. I want to make sure that my saves. I want to have um, you know, at least you know, a couple hundred saves, that's fine. Um, and the most important thing I also want to do is I want to disable unknown signals. Uh, unknown signals gives you uh, unrealistic drop pods just falling from the sky giving you random supplies. I don't think that's really realistic. I mean you could play that way, some people do. I mean they'll just like start the game with nothing but you know themselves and maybe a weapon. Um, uh, to scavenge parts from wolves and spiders, which doesn't again, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me personally. Some people like to go for it; that's fine. Um, you know, if salvaging your your thing is your thing, you know, to go out and kill stuff out in space where typically no life is found, anyways, that's that's fine. That's fine. But anyways, <laughs> I digress. Uh, but anyways, I do want to go ahead and disable unknown signals. As I said, I I, I don't need any scavenging opportunities, um, and I'll just hit OK at this point. We're good to go um, to go and start this game, um, but uh, before I did, just hit OK, 
and I want to publish this one, this particular scenario, to uh, the work Steam Workshop, and you should see it on there here shortly. And now you can go ahead and use this particular start uh, without doing all the setup, and just play it as is, as I've set it up. Now, um, if I tr go to the uh, workshop here, if I go to my workshop, then there's the new start that I've uploaded here. Um, there's an older version of the start over there, but um, and you can just go and subscribe to this and, and, and play it. So. We are. So to get started, I'm just going to load. Make sure it's selected and hit load. All right. We are now on the moon and in a survival situation looking around. Looks like I have some sort of deposit over here. You can tell with the, the colored ground over there. This is a good starting location. Very nice, very nice. All right. Well, first things first. Uh, I'm going to open up the kit here. This is the starter kit, and in it, very, very low number of supplies. If you're missing just one of these parts, I'm sorry, folks, you're dead. <laughs> it's it, it, this kit can't be reduced any further. If you can reduce it further and still survive and thrive and build everything in the game from this point forward, I mean, let me know. I mean, that that's what this project's for. But I'm going to go ahead and grab all the, the tools, a uh, welder, grinder, and a drill, and two steel plates according to the instructions. That's what I need. Hit escape. Uh, my first order of business is to, is to lay down um, an advanced rotor, but before I do that, I just want to set up my toolbar uh, at this point. So to do that, I'm going to do, pull the welder, double click, do grinder, get my drill, double click. And the first thing I want to build is an advanced rotor. And there it is. Don't click. I'll need a control panel to go ahead and set the conditions on the rotor that I want to make a small head on it. After that, I'm going to be building a battery. And after the battery, I'm going to build a survival kit. And that's all there is needed at this point uh, to unpack the kit and to get started, I will go ahead and lay down the advanced rotor. Now, different ways you can lay down blocks and space engineers. Um, you hit the B key to kind of flip between different placement modes here. It's free placement mode here. Um, I don't want to have this particular uh, block standing up like this, so I'm going to use the insert and page page up key. I'm going to use the page up here to kind of rotate it so it faces kind of like on its side like this. I'm going to make sure that the green bars are underneath the ground. Uh, let's see here, this ground is not too straight. We'll just put it right there. Perfect. And just plop that chassis on right there and maybe kind of gently nudge this. We go ahead and the next step according to the instructions is to grind off the large head here. And that's been ground off. Next thing is to build a welded control panel on the side. So here's the control panel. Um, can't put it anywhere else except right here. Yeah. And go to weld it up. And according to this, I need a construction component and a computer and a display. So if I go into the kit, I've got the computer. And I don't have any construction components, and I don't have any displays. So let's go and just put the computer in here. And as you can tell, as soon as I start welding, it just throws the computer into the chassis of the control panel. But I still need to get control. Uh, and you still need to get those components on the right there. The one construction component and a display. To do that, I can get that from the cargo container itself. As you can tell, it's already made up of these of interior plates, displays, motors, computers, construction components. So I'm just going to grind some of this off of here. I got a display. I need to get to those construction components. So yeah, it is going to deconstruct the box a little bit, but that's fine. I got two construction components. That's enough. If I look at my hit I, go to my personal inventory, I can see I've got two construction components that I can use. Now, this is just a temporary control panel, so I can just weld it up as I need, access it, Go to the advanced rotor selection. Um, to access the control panel, you just hit F or K. Um, 
I'm going to go to advanced rotor, scroll down, and I'm going to add the small head and lock the rotor. That's important. If you don't lock the rotor, your parts that are attached to it are going to be flopping around. And it's not a lot of fun. So um, that is complete. I can now grind off the control panel. So grind off the control panel very carefully. Don't grind off accidentally the uh, advanced rotor here. You don't need to weld anything more to the advanced rotor. As you can tell on the right side, you only need that one steel plate. Um, you can throw other items onto it, but it's very hard to rip it off uh, without causing uh, the whole thing to just deconstruct and really mess up your day. So don't bother doing that. Just come back to your uh, cargo container and just weld it back to functional. Um, and you don't have to weld it all the way up because you're going to grind it down eventually anyways. Uh, then your next step at this point is to grab four more steel plates. Um, not have six, I need four. So double click. I'm using the right click mouse drop. I'm going to type in five. So, so there's four total, five, five total plates. I need to remove this computer. I don't want the computer when I go to this next step, which is to build the battery. And so um, I should only have those five steel plates. And I'm going to now weld the chassis for the battery and make sure it's kind of where I want it, just kind of centered. That's fine. That'll work. Yeah, and then use the insert key to kind of maybe turn it around because I have those status bars on the top of the battery once it's constructed. And I'm just going to go and put those four steel plates that I have remaining after I plop that chassis into the structure. So there, the steel plates are now in the battery chassis. The next thing I want to do is grab the last steel plate here. And I now want to go ahead and maybe some metal components too as well. Um, I, want, I want to build a survival kit, so hit 7 on your keyboard to go to that option there. And I'm just going to use the page up, insert, page down keys, delete, to kind of flip this around. should see the control console somewhere. There it is, it's upside down. There's the control console. You can barely see it here in the holographic display. But uh, that is exactly, oh, I lost it again there. I want to turn this around so that the container is facing that way. And yeah, there's the computer facing that way. So now I've got the flat container uh, access, or flat access port here on the outside, and I have the display facing on that side. But I mean, you can build this however you wish. I just tend to be very picky. And I'm going to go ahead and weld in uh, the uh, construction, or the medical components. As soon as I just tap the welder, it just throws them in there. So I'll just tap. There it goes. I got three medical components. Grab that computer component. Put that in here as well. So now I've got the one computer uh, in there that I need. That's fine. I now want to go ahead and grab the power cells. And just start putting those into the, the battery until I put all those power cells into the battery. Because now I'm just emptying out my kit here and putting those power cells. So I got 20 power cells into the battery chassis. And all I have left are the two large steel tubes, which you're going to need for um, an oxygen hydrogen generator. Just keep those in your personal inventory for now. And just now that the box is empty, you can grind down the start emergency recovery kit. Just completely grind it all the way down, get all these parts, which you're going to need. And the first thing you want to weld up, you can just double click, just weld up the survival kit. Weld it up completely to full at this point. It will be offline because the battery's not on yet. But that's the next thing we're going to weld is the battery and so here we go so double click on this battery and there you have it now as you can tell um, I threw in those extra construction components by mistake there that's fine um, I mean if you want to be more specific you can drag out the components you don't need and fit everything but those large tubes back into now the survival kit um, the kit can take these because they can produce them as well the survival kits pretty handy it can turn uh, stone into ingots and ingots uh, it can make into uh, these different parts here under production control panel here for the survival kit and we're going to uh, build an oxygen uh, tank uh, uh, generator at this point and to slap it on this side of the uh, of the um, of the survival core. So here's your survival core. Um, the uh, start emergency kit has been full disassembled and reassembled into a survival core. And this is literally how you get started um, um, from this point forward to survive and thrive. Um, we haven't yet reached a survival stat status um, if you're actually in an airless environment. So your next step at this point is to just get your drill out and start 
I'm using the uh, C key to crouch, double left click to drill. I'm just going to just drill a hole. I'm just get a bunch of this stone, using Alt to kind of maybe pan around as I do this, and to kind of move forward in a kind of a circular motion so I can get out of this hole. So I'm just going to go ahead and just get a pile, a pile of this stuff here, this stone. Now, as you progress uh, through the game, um, it is recommended that you go ahead and make uh, machines that allow you to go ahead and mine, so you don't have to do it by hand. Um, if you use scripts uh, out there that are compiled by certain uh, individuals, you're more than welcome uh, to go ahead and create automatic uh, mining ships, which will make your life a whole lot easier. So I'm going to throw this stone into the... Uh, survival kit for now. And as you can tell, my energy is getting a little low. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the F key on the console here and just recharge my energy. Now the survival kit, I'm going to show you how, you, know, you can tell it's very slow at this point. I'm going to stop charging at this point. The survival kit, um, the way it is right now with that uh, medium cargo container, the parts you ground off for it, does contain 30 interior plates, 10 of which are only needed to go ahead and weld up a, I'll just hit Control 2, hit G, uh, passenger seat. So I'll just type in the word seat here. There's my passenger seat. Just double click that. And I just like to put this passenger seat like right on the battery, just like this. Um, that's upside down here. Let's see, use my direction keys in the upper right corner there, as you can tell, to kind of spin it around and plop it the way I want. Hit Control 1, go back to my welder, and just weld out those 10 plates. And now, as you can tell, I can just sit here in the seat. This is great. This seat also has its own uh, inventory, up to a thousand. So we'll left click to move those tubes over. So now I've kind of freed up my inventory. I've got a kind of a kind of a free uh, cargo container there. So I'm gonna go and grab the uh, rest of this um, stone, but first drop off my t tools. I don't need to kind of free up some more inventory space and just kind of hold down the F key while looking at this, or just using my left mouse button. Um, I believe I'm right there, so I'm gonna kind of dig myself out of here. Just kind of a nice way up to the kit here. That's fine. And throw this all into the uh, survival kit. Now to go ahead and get the ingots uh, started, I'm just gonna go and I can just click for one ingot for er, one pile of ingots here, um, or I can hold down the control key um, to do ten. I'll just do shift and we'll just set it for 100. And I'll just let that just start producing what I need here. I'm going to grab maybe about, maybe get maybe five or six trips of this stuff um, to get everything I need. Um, but at least to get started on the oxygen generator, I'm going to need to go to production. I'm going to go, I'm going to need to get a steel plate. So I'm going to see, go to basic components up in this area here. And just one steel plate for now. It should build it put it into the inventory on this side. When it's done, just double left click, put it into my inventory. I'm gonna hit G, look for the O2 generator. Double click, puts it at position eight, that's fine. I'm going to make sure I align those ports on the back side here to the ports that are on the survival kit so that I can just feed oxygen and um, as I need, to, and hydrogen, to the kit. So I'll just plop that chassis right there. I don't have my welder because I left it in the kit. That's just fine. But neither am I going to weld it up right now. I'm just going to grab this stuff. Put this into the survival kit cooker. And now, I know I need two steel plates. So there's one more. What else do I need? If I get my welder out... I'm going to need eight construction components, three of which are in the battery, which I really can't reclaim now. So now you know, <laughs> you know why you probably want to be sparing with your parts when you're welding stuff and not accidentally weld it into a chassis that you accidentally can grind down and really ruin your day. So I want to go to construction components. I need eight of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So give me eight of those. What else do I need? I'm going to need two large steel tubes, which I have in the, in the chair. I need a motor and three computers. So let's go ahead and 
queue up a motor here. So we'll go to one motor and three computers. And according to this, I'm going to need some more iron ingots, which means I need to do some more drilling. So let's go ahead and hit the drill out. And let's, let's go get that started here. So double left click will hold down the drill for me. So I don't have to. Very useful. Now all I'm going to show you um, in this video is just how you can get to a completely self-sufficient state. We're just going to build the oxygen uh, hydrogen generator and then um, a solar panel to uh, recharge the battery. And then we'll call this uh, video good for then. It should be sufficient. Now, you're going to watch your oxygen while you're doing this. At your time limit there. I want to start um, gathering some ice once I've got one bar of oxygen left. One, two, three, four, five. Get five of those plates, grab those tubes. There we go. And put those tubes in here. And I need those. Plenty of three more steel plates. That's all I need. And there you go. So double left click to weld this up. And there it is. Before I head off, first things first, hit K, GPS, always set your position new from current position so you know where your home is. And so off I go, hit X to turn on the jetpack, spacebar to go up, and W to go forward. I want to look for shadows on the ground to find out which way is north because you just follow the difference between night and day. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Just fly, 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 grab my drill. Don't forget to turn on my dampeners so I don't kill myself. And Z right now. Here we go. Here's some ice. Crouch down, double left click, and we'll just harvest. Now if you double right click, click, it'll just excavate. It won't actually harvest anything. Um, but since I want to harvest, I'll be double left clicking for now. Excavating is a lot faster, but you don't actually save anything. So I'm going to hit K on my keyboard here, set a GPS coordinate here to kind of set my north. I can edit this, call it north ice if I want. There we go. And I'll just go just jetpack on my way home here. We'll just turn on the dampeners, fly in, and turn off my jetpack. And now just slap all this ice. F and double click and there now it is in the generator all I can do now is just hit L down F and I will automatically fill up my oxygen and my hydrogen as well not bad and then as you can tell still have lots of ice from a thousand doesn't uh, take a whole lot to fill up your um, your personal needs for that so great well I now have a, um, a starter base at this point um, I'm not yet self-sufficient though until I build a solar panel and that is essentially the next thing I'm going to put on here. Um, small grid solar panel. I could do a large grid out here connected to you know the large grid portion of the uh, of the uh, advanced rotor but I want to do a small grid because it requires less parts as you can tell on the right side there um, and it shouldn't um, take too long to do so but I do need steel, two steel plates to lay down this chassis so I'm going to go and get that done, and I'll show you uh, when it's done. Just get the first one. There we go. That's all I need for now. And nine. I hit X to turn on my jets, and kind of fit this on top. Sort of like this. Here, see if I can flip it over. There we go. Boom. Perfect. Kind of facing upwards. And to do this, I'm going to need... Two steel plates, a construction component, and girder. Oh, looks like we've got four solar. I'm going to throw it in here and see if I get my solar cell. And there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell, I am now fully self-sufficient. I have a battery being now recharged. If I go into control panel here and go to battery, um, I can see that it will be fully recharged in three days. Obviously, I can build more solar panels to uh, get that recharge time down a lot faster. But for now, I consider uh, myself uh, fully self-sufficient using the starter kit, and it didn't take us all this long to get here. 
and uh, uh, so far this seems to be working out very well so um, I'll go ahead and I'll leave this particular scenario in the workshop you guys are welcome to try it out uh, or go ahead and just uh, download the subscribe to the uh, uh, starter kit itself and go ahead and start creating your own survival scenarios and um, let me know uh, in the comments um, if you've uh, if you tried it, what you think of it, uh, if you have any suggestions. Um, let me know how it went for you. And uh, I also like to see uh, you know any empires that have been started as a result of a single start uh, block, a single block start. So, uh, but uh, yeah, hope to see you guys uh, in uh, other episodes that we've got here on this channel, um, Survive and Thrive series with my son. Uh, building uh, uh, our base straight from this particular kit um, from the previous version of course but uh, hoping to do uh, another playthrough in the future with this particular version and see how that goes but until next time you guys uh, stay safe out there and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you in space